This is Gigi Sabat, and you're listening to the Walk With Me podcast. My guest today is Rick Thomas. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Gigi. Good to be here. Likewise. It's such an honor to have you here today. Now, why don't you start off by telling us more about you and where are you from? Well, I've been living in Greenville, South Carolina since 1986. Uh, I'm from right outside of Charlotte, North Carolina, so it's just 100 miles away. So basically, I've been living in this area all of my life. Uh, we have a ministry called lifeovercoffee.com, and uh, it's really just an extension or the outflow of what my life has been. Uh, we believe that anybody, any two Christians can come together and, and do life over coffee as a offer help and hope to each other. And so uh, my ministry, my passion is to help Christians to come together and, and to encourage one another, to counsel one another, to disciple one another. And again, just very briefly, that is an outflow of my life, uh, my early history. My, my dad was an abusive drunk. Uh, he beat us five boys uh, all of our lives, all of our young lives. Uh, I was in jail when I was 15 years old. Uh, I was in the, I tell people I was in the pharmaceutical business when I was a teenager, which is a nice way of saying I smoked a lot of weed. My two older brothers went to prison and then they were murdered uh, 10 years apart in 1987 and 1997. God saved me when I was 25 years old and I dedicated my life to help people who uh, really are struggling. And so for the past quarter of a century, I've been doing biblical counseling, which I don't do that anymore. Now I train people uh, to do life over coffee. And we started this ministry in 2008. And so that's what we do. It's all online and we give virtually all of our resources away so that anybody who has access to the internet can uh, get our resources. All of our content is put in a read, watch, listen format so people can read. We have hundreds upon hundreds of articles. Uh, we have over a thousand books, over a thousand videos, uh, et cetera. So it's a huge warehouse full of content that anybody can access. And it's all produced around how to help each other to work through whatever our issues may be, marriage, parenting, addiction, forgiveness, bitterness, anger, uh, just pick any topic. The Bible speaks to all of them. And so it's a very practical, hands-on uh, ministry uh, that I get to do. And so I'm very thankful. Amen. Amen. Very powerful statement there. And circling back to the challenges that you mentioned earlier, so sorry to hear that you went through that. Well, uh, yes, uh, obviously it was tough uh, as a, a young person going through those trials, but I, I see it as God's gift to me. Uh, it's similar to Joseph in the sense that what you meant for evil, God meant for good. And, and so I don't have any animosity. I don't have a bad attitude at all toward my dad and you know what he did to us boys. Uh, I see it as part of God's plan. Of course, I had no idea of knowing that when I was a child. I was just an angry kid uh, and then an angry teenager who was uh, rebelling. Uh, but now I see, looking back on it, that God was using all of those horrific events in my life to help me uh, to learn how to overcome these issues myself. And, of course, that naturally flows out into helping others and uh, who would have known as a 15-year-old kid sitting in jail that I would spend my entire adult life uh, helping people work through problems? And so in one sense, I was the poster child uh, for problems. And so that's why I see it as a gift now. And so I have no regrets whatsoever about uh, the past. And I appreciate God's grace extended to my life and teaching me through his word how to change. And of course, now, uh, that's what I have been doing for a long time, helping other people who find themselves in all sorts of difficulties and relational challenges. Amen. God's grace truly matters. Now, Rick, can you tell us a little bit more about your books? Yeah, well, I have uh, three three books uh, that are on Amazon. Uh, one of them here is called uh, Suffering Well. Uh, it's kind of what I was saying or implying earlier, uh, everybody is going to suffer. Uh, 
there's no way around that. We're fallen people living in a fallen world. And so the option is not whether we're going to suffer or not. We all suffer. Uh, but the choice we have to make, are we going to suffer well or are we going to suffer poorly? And so the subtitle of this book is How to Steward God's Most Feared Blessing. Job said in chapter 3 that the thing that I have feared has come upon me. He was very much afraid that bad things were going to happen to his family. And of course, that is the thing that he feared. And all of us have some sense of self-awareness and and maybe even fearfulness or tentativeness that bad things can happen because they do happen. And so what we want to do is to learn how to manage or to steward God's most feared blessing. And of course, the suffering that comes into our life can be turned into our greatest blessing. And so this book here is an autobiographical journey that I took through the book of Job. I spent four years studying the book of Job and I told the Lord that at some point in the future, I would I will make notes uh, and I will write out everything that you're teaching me. And so this is a autobiographical study through uh, the 42 tap chapters of Job. And so it's really about my life and a very um, awful season in my life where God was teaching me how to suffer well. The other book here is called Change Me. The Ultimate Life Change Handbook, because I do biblical counseling, I have been for more than a quarter of a century. People ask me all the time, uh, what would be the process of change? If you were going to disciple somebody uh, from A to Z of how to change, uh, what would you teach them? What would you want to tell them? And so I wrote this book called Change Me. And this is a discipleship manual that walks through the entire change process. Uh, this is an excellent book for any uh, believer uh, to work through. It's, it's very good if you're helping somebody. In fact, a gentleman from Delaware emailed me yesterday and said that he's taking his entire men's group through this book, Change Me. And it has really uh, spawned a lot of excellent questions, he told me. So you can use it personally. You can use it helping somebody as you do life over coffee, uh, or you can use it in a, a larger group. And then the third book is called Get Ready. I don't have a copy of that, uh, but it's on Amazon. We've sold out here. But Get Ready is a marriage book. And so it is a book for anyone who is thinking about getting married and those of us who are married. And of course, I wrote this book from thousands of hours of counseling uh, married couples. And so the things that I have learned, the things that I have counseled, I put it in a book so that people can have this counseling advice. And so uh, we have people who use it in premarital counseling uh, as they're getting ready to tie the knot. And then of course, couples, uh, who may find themselves in some relational challenges, they use this book to work through those problems. And so basically these are three counseling, long-term counseling sessions uh, in a book, whether it's suffering or how to change or get ready is for pre-marriage and also married couples. And so those are the three books that we have in paperback. Now we have 20 something books on uh, in our store that are digital downloads. All of those are free at lifeovercoffee.com. I just released uh, one uh, this week, as a matter of fact, called Boasting in Weakness, as Paul talked about how to, how to accept the reality that we are jars in clay. And God puts his treasure in jars of clay so that he can show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. And so I have a book on anger, a book on communication, et cetera. But all of those books are free and they're in our store at lifeovercoffee.com. I love it. Now, Rick, what message do you have for folks who are challenged? Well, uh, this is our is, is an abbreviation of our tagline, uh, like on this mug, is that there there is there is hope and help. Uh, these are the two essential words, and so as we, as Christians, you, me, uh, those who may be listening, when we're talking to someone who is struggling, uh, the first thing we want to do is we want to give them hope, and the way that we give them hope is twofold. 
uh, I would say to you, Gigi, if you came to me with some issue, and I sh I'm sure you have zero issues in your life, uh, you're probably just nailing it uh, perfectly in every area, but just pretend that you were struggling with something. I would say, Gigi, Gigi that um, there is hope found in God's word. Uh, God's word has an answer for uh, whatever it is that you may be going through. And so that would be point number one. And then point number two is, I know that to be true because this is what God has done for me. And so I would want the people that are, are struggling uh, with relational, situational uh, issues, uh, I would want them to know that there is hope in God's word. And then, of course, we want to be exhibit A for what that hope looks like. We want to be a living example. And, and so we're just sharing what God has taught us to other people. So there is hope. And then, of course, there is practical help. Uh, and it is very practical. And that's why we uh, have made almost all of our resources on our website free, because we want people to access them so that they can experience the hope that we have in Christ. Uh, but also the help that he gives us as we walk through God's word, practically applying it to whatever issue that, you know, someone may be struggling with. That's very true. Now, what if someone wants to build a relationship with him? Where can they start, Rick? A relationship with God? Yes, sir. Yeah, well, as Jesus told Nicodemus in chapter 3, verse number 7, marvel not that I said to you, you must be born again. And so we have two options in this life. We can choose to walk in darkness or to walk in light. And so within Christian speak, uh, the Christian nomenclature, we call it being born again, being saved, being regenerated, generated a second time. That's that's basically the 25 cent word for being born again. And so when I was 25 years old, I had to make that decision. I mean, I had lived 25 years of walking in darkness, doing things my way, making my decisions, and it just led to one problem after another. I was accumulating more problems that I could keep up with. And uh, someone introduced me uh, to the Bible and, and, and talked to me about how I could become a Christian. And honestly, that was a foreign concept uh, to me. Uh, but I asked Christ to save me and, and, and to forgive me of all of my sins. And those are basic, the basic steps is that uh, I recognize that I am a sinner. I need a new life. Only you can give me this new life. I trust you to forgive me of all my sins and to save me. I want to be a Christian. Christian means Christ follower. I want to follow Christ. And so I did. And that is the first step. And then, of course, after that, you, you just keep plowing through God's word. And it was really phenomenal. I remember those early days as I was reading the Bible. I have one, uh, have one here. And as I was reading the Bible, it was like I was looking into a mirror, which is what James says. The Bible is like a mirror. And I was seeing myself, and it was answering my questions. Obviously, it doesn't make you perfect. I still have uh, issues, but it's kind of like being born as a baby. When you're born again, you're now an infant in Christ, but you, you continuously mature. And I've been walking with the Lord since 1984. Uh, when he regenerated me. And so the two primary things I would recommend for someone is to uh, God's word, obviously, that's, that's the uh, lamp unto our feet and the light to our path, but also to have somebody to uh, help you to uh, explain it. We call it discipleship, as you know. We call it mentoring. And uh, I like to tell people that, you know, every Timothy needs a Paul. We need a Paul. We need someone who's a little farther down the road uh, that can help us and teach us God's word. And I've had some uh, invaluable mentors in my life, including my, my very first pastor. And so after you become a Christian, you start uh, gathering with God's people in a local church, and you're just building a new community, and now you're growing in faith. And it won't rid yourself of all your problems. Uh, but 
it will put you on an excellent path of no regret. And it just gives you insight and clarity that the darkness of this world cannot offer. Very powerful. Now, your company is called Life Over Coffee. You could have named the company anything. Why Life Over Coffee, Rick? Well, if you were to do a Google Earth of our uh, ministry, and if you were to bring it down to just one little pixel, and the only thing that you could see is just this one little pixel, what you would see is, is coffee. And that is our brand. And the reason that I chose coffee as our brand is because everybody understands. I mean, everybody knows what coffee is. And so then as you begin to back out from that one pixel, what you will see is a, a coffee mug. And then you'll see two people sitting across from each other and they're talking to each other. And so we believe uh, our, our ministry is very much relational. And we believe that two people can come together. I was doing a radio interview a week ago and the gentleman said, I don't like coffee. And I said, well, that's just like ruins my entire brand. But what we uh, decided is that uh, we're going to do life over kombucha. Uh, that's what he likes. And so I said, that's fine. We'll do life over kombucha. But coffee is something that everybody understands. We have this bookmark here and I can hold it up to your camera. And you, and you see there's a uh, the, the, the sun. Uh, there it is. Now it's in view. And so there's seven rays there. Uh, seven in the Bible is the number of perfection. And so we are complete. We're made complete in Christ. That's why there are seven rays. Also, it communicates the sun coming up every day. And so there's new mercy, new grace we receive in Christ every day. So we can be made complete in him the seven rays. And of course, every day we receive new mercies from Christ. And then of course, underneath that is the, um, is the mug. It's if I can put it right wherever my camera is, but there is a mug there. And so that's where, and that communicates conversation. And so this is our mark, uh, our logo. And so it really communicates effectively uh, what we are about. And I do believe that, that any two Christians can sit down and and do life over coffee that one helping the other and and reciprocating back and forth uh, it, we there are over 31 another's in the new testament we're to encourage one another we are um, to stir one another up to loving good works we're to admonish one another we are to counsel we're to teach one another we are to comfort one another and so you see this one another language throughout the new testament and that's basically what it is two people coming together one another and they're helping each other we chose coffee because again everybody understands what coffee is and it communicates a a vibe a tone a relationship you can kind of smell it and, and and you could just see two people talking and doing life over coffee and so that's why uh we chose um uh, chose that uh particular name for our ministry i love it now rick what is your best advice to the audience for walking with purpose and living a life of happiness well, uh, you can do a lot of things by yourself, but uh, sanctification and, and growing uh, is not one of those things. We need each other. And so if you really want to walk with purpose, joy, happiness, if you want to reduce the soul noise uh, that we can carry inside of ourselves and truly have shalom of the soul, have peace of the soul, we need to do that in community. And it's interesting when uh, the Pharisees were asking Jesus in Matthew 22, hey, would you take all 600 laws, 600 plus laws in the Old Testament? And uh, which one is the greatest? And he said, there's two, and that is to love God and love others. And you will find that the happiest people, the most fulfilled people are those that love God and love others more than themselves. Uh, there is something that is just that is replenishing as we pour our lives out to other people. By the way, uh, I, I just met you just a few moments ago, but you embody that uh, when I look at your countenance and the way that you carry yourself and uh, this glow that you have about yourself, but it's tied directly to your affection for God and your desire to help people. And so you are emulating 
the royal law. I mean, the two great commandments of loving God and loving others first. The most selfish and shallow and hollow people that you will ever meet are people that are all about themselves. What's in it for me? As Ecclesi as Solomon said in Ecclesiastes 1.8, that the eye is never full of seeing and the ear is never full of hearing. We will never be able to satisfy ourselves. And if, unfortunately, the world is just all about me. It's everything is about me, which creates so much fracturing and so much competitiveness and so much individualism. But when we pour our li lives out for others, not only as God works through us and in other people, that it just brings a wholeness to our own lives. And so what I encourage people to do, it, this is our parenting advice to our children. We told our children, there's only four thick, four words you need to remember to have a wonderful life. And two of those words are actually the same. Love God, love others. That is the entire law love God and love others. And if you commit your life to doing that, uh, you won't have a perfect life because trouble is going to come. We all suffer, but you'll be able to suffer well for sure. And you will be, you will be full. God will bless you. You'll be walking in the spirit. And that is a very satisfying life uh, when you're loving God and loving others. Amen. Very true. Now, do you have any last words for the audience, Rick? Well, uh, if we can serve uh, you for sure and, and your audience, uh, it, it's a buffet. And so uh, it's a free buffet, actually. And so you could come over to uh, lifeovercoffee.com and just uh, I would just recommend hitting the search feature in the top right hand corner and you can type in any word. Uh, anger or any phrase, and uh, there will be just scores and scores of articles, videos, and podcasts that will just show up uh, uh, that will meet whatever your query is. And so just uh, ask. Um, and that's probably the most effective way that we could uh, serve folks. Uh, this is, and I do want Christians to understand this. Uh, I'm 64 years old, uh, Gigi. I'm an old man. And uh, this is the darkest that I've ever seen uh, America. This is the darkest that I've ever seen the world. But this is our time to shine. I mean, the darker the night, the brighter the light. And we do have the light. Jesus is the light. And so we should not retreat. Uh, we don't have to be harsh and unkind, and I don't recommend that at all. Uh, we should be gracious, we should be compassionate, but we also should be courageous. And this is what I appreciate about what you're doing, is you're trying to penetrate the darkness with the light of the gospel. And this is what I just appeal to Christians to do, uh, is that just let tell, tell people uh, about Christ because they're searching, they're hungry, and we do have the answer. And if we can serve in in that journey of of your listeners, um, again, just jump over into our coffee shop and uh, take advantage of the resources, and you can share them and and use them, uh, you know, however you wish, as you do life over coffee uh, with others. Amen. That's very true. Thank you, Rick. Now, where can the audience find you? Well, we're easy. Uh, it's lifeovercoffee.com. Uh, we uh, intentionally, when I started the ministry in 2008, I did not want any brick and mortar. Uh, I didn't want any offices. Uh, we wanted to put everything in cyberspace. And so we wanted to use technology redemptive. We call it the redemptive use of technology. And so the world's been using technology for decades. And I thought, man, we could use technology in a redemptive, restorative way. And so we just decided that we were going to put our big box store in cyberspace. Our coffee shop is in cyberspace. And so we're really easy Define. And the other reason is that that I don't have any intentions of retiring uh, and I didn't want to be uh, tied to an office. And so I wanted to be mobile. And so having our office, our coffee shop in cyberspace allows me to work and I can work anywhere in the world. And we travel all the time, but it, it never hinders what we're doing because, again, our ministry uh, is in cyberspace, probably something like what you have going on as well. It's really simple. Honestly, uh, you know, you're, 
you you just pull up your phone and here we go and uh, and we can do this and the simplicity uh, of being able to do something like this is really phenomenal. This is a great time for uh, anybody to do what you are you or I are doing. Yes, that's very true. And you raised a great point because as we were experiencing some technical issues here, we couldn't have the desktop today, but we were able to do it on the mobile device. And that just goes to sh show you that you can do anything uh, with what you have. So what's right. With, right, what, what's right in front of you. So thank you, Rick. I appreciate that. Yeah, you're very welcome. Yes. And thank you for being a guest on the Walk With Me podcast. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. God bless. Thanks.